Well, I can hear the surf pounding on the beach, and that means one thing. We're going to hit the sand today and try and catch a few of Western Australia's finest species. I'm joined today by the Real Shore Sport Fishing Team, Matt and James. These boys know their stuff. They're on YouTube doing some pretty cool stuff, so I thought I'd better come and check it out. Now, James, what part of the world are we actually in? Paul, well, we're about half an hour south of Marga River here, so we've got a cracking day today, so hopefully we'll get into some fish. It sure is exciting now, Matt. Species-wise, what can we catch? Uh, well, today, Paul, the options are really endless, but we should be in for some tailor, some herring, or tom Tommy Ruff, as you know them, and maybe even a shark, so it should be good. I'm getting tired just thinking about it. Let's go, boys. I believe there's a motorbike down here somewhere. Let's do it. Oh, I love that. No dramas, Paul. Well, this beach just gets better and better the further down we come. I've got to ask, though, why here? Uh, Paul, what we've got today, we've got a, quite a big swell, but we've found along this part of the coast that the shore boat's a lot closer in, so we should be able to cast over the waves today. I reckon I can cast over the waves. I've got massive guns, mate, massive yeah. guns, but are we fishing lures or bait? We're going to fish bait today, Paul. We're going to use a gang muley setup with a running star sinker, so something a bit different um, compared to what you're probably used to over on the east coast, but something that's WA sand gropers. We love the old gang muley in the start. And if you don't live in West Australia, a muley is a pilchard, but they say it a bit different over here. You'll understand later, trust me. Let's go, boys. No dramas. Get into it. Get into it. We've got our gang of four, and the best way to rig these is we lie a muley across our four fingers like so. Line the last hook up on the tail, and so our first hook's on the eye. Make a little impression there on the tail, as we can see. Last hook goes in, right along the back section there, second one. And then if we've done it nice, the top hook should come right through the eye, and there's a beautifully presented muley. little on here, I think it might be a picker, maybe a little herring or a little Tommy Ruff, something like that, could be a whiting. Here we go. Yeah, nice little herring. Oh, hang on, we got a blue nose salmon. Never seen one of them around these parts. They're usually a northern uh, fish species, but tiny little blue nose salmon. You never know, awesome. Yeah, nice. James, what did you say? When you cast that bait out. I said, I like the look of that cast, Paul, right the blue water. He okay. said, that is a tail. I'm over the top of you, mate. Well done. And what was with that fish you caught before? How, how oh. long have you been catching them in the south? Paul, I tell you, I've never seen a blue salmon down this far, mate. That'd be like catching a barramundi off oh, the beach down no. here. Pretty rare catch, mate. What do you reckon we have here? I reckon we've got a nice little tailor. Oh, yep. I see a caudal fin slapping around. What is it? A tailor, it is. And uh, I'll do the honours for you, mate, because he jumped off right at the crucial moment there. And that is a beautiful chopper tailor. Grab him. It is, mate. Now, is that small, average, or large for this area? Now, it's quite small, Paul, so usually we get them up to around 600, 700 long. So yep. this is a nice little chopper. Well, that wind is blowing a dog off a chain. The swell is pumping. James, not great conditions, but we still found a fish, didn't we? Nah, you're right, Paul. It's, it's not ideal conditions, but we did battle through. We did pull a few tailor out of the wash there, so it's great. But I think we might have time for a move. I think so. Now, the great thing about this part of the world, it's never too far to another destination. Have you got something in mind? Yeah, that's it, Paul. The beauty of the southwest is no matter what the wind condition, you're always going to find a spot that's protected. So we might head north a little bit, find some protected water, and see what we can turn up. Sold. Let's get on the bike and get out of here. Leave such a short drive and the wind is almost gone. What's the deal with this place, Matty? Yeah, Paul, that's the beauty of the southwest. You can always find a spot out of the wind and that's good for a fish. When you say good for a fish, there are fish here. Well, let's hope so, Paul. We've seen a few in the wave, so let's hope we can get them. Race into the fish. No worries. Up first. 
Let us go fish. Good work, mate. Feels like not a bad fish, Paul. It's giving you a bit of carry, eh? Yeah, it could be a juvenile salmon or a tailor. So they're the two species you're mainly going to get Yeah, in? that's the... That's the main species we get in here. And well manoeuvred around the rocks, mate. Yeah. Oh, oh, he's gone. He actually did you on that rock. Yeah. No, he just jumped off up. And yeah. we're on here now. I've got to say, I think that was the biggest tail I've ever seen in my life. That's just bad luck. No good? What are these boys doing to me? He's coming out of the water. Yes, we're onto another nice little chopper tailor here. When they're in nice and close, you gotta get that rod down to keep them from jumping, keep that head in the water. Pull her on here. He's a nice little fish. Nice work, mate. Just slide him up, mate. It's all yours, Paul. Beautiful. That is a really, really nice tailor, mate. Now, on the east coast, Fraser Island area, Taylor is such an important species to the economy. The beach is just absolutely lying there, four wheel drives going up and down. And in the west, they're a pretty iconic fish too, aren't they? They sure are. The Taylor are the, the staple so uh, food source over here for all the local fishermen, and they're great sport fish and just a wonderful fish. Yeah. They've got some serious teeth, and that's why we use gang hooks. You can see he's got two gangs in his gob and two out the front there. And when he's actually biting down those gang hooks, obviously he's not biting your mono. So you don't need to use wire for Taylor. Mono leader, four gang hooks, and that's a fair old fish. What a magnificent day. We've seen some beautiful beaches and the boys, and I say the boys, have caught some beautiful fish. Taylor, and what was that other strange thing you caught? It was a blue nose salmon call. Unbelievable. Well, as the wide mouth frog said, you don't see many of them around here, do you? Now, lures, bait, it's a pretty cool part of the world, isn't it? It sure is, Paul. Southwest has it all. It's definitely worth coming down here and having a look. Come down and have a look, and guess what? I'm coming back because the boys have told me some stories about some very big fish and lots of them. Make sure you check out Real Shore Sport Fishing on Facebook, like their page, have a look at some of their clips. They're pretty cool. Today's fishing and boating tip is brought to you by boatsales.com.au. I don't know if you can tell, but it's been a very horrible day weather-wise. We've had coats on and all sorts of stuff, a bit of rain, massive winds. Every time that sun has managed to break through the clouds, we've got a bite and the fish have really fired up. And we've just been talking about it, so every time that sun's come out, we've got a few good casts in, we've really concentrated in our fishing, and we've caught big fish. So make sure when you're out there fishing, always, always, just notice your environment, keep an eye on it and try and find a trend because it could make the difference between catching a whole bag of fish and very few fish at all. This fishing boat trip was brought to you by BoatSales.com. Well, we're 279 kilometres south of Perth, a magnificent part of the West Australian coastline. This morning I'm with Ray Walker, Acker Rev. And Rev, these parts of the coast are like your second home, aren't they? Yeah, so it's been 50 years since I've started coming down here. I ended up, I started herring fishing when I was a kid down at Quarrimut Bay in 1962, so I've got a rough idea where we're going. And this part of the world is called Wired Up? That's correct. Well, we are wired up. Rev is so excited, you nearly jumped out of your boots before, mate. <laughs> yeah, well, that's just so I can educate you boys about rock fishing safety. That's, that's my main purpose today. This the man, second one is to catch a fish for you. Yeah, good luck with that. This man <laughs> is very safety conscious. More about it in a moment. We'll check out the signage. We're going to actually tie ourselves to the rocks. No, actually we're going to tie ourselves to an anchor that is glued into the rocks. Uh, that's the whole idea of what we're doing down here today, which is our method down here of saving lives. So we'll run into that later, but should we catch a fish? Let's do that. Right. You can carry that bag, mate. It's the light, it's the light one. <laughs> yeah. And you better lead the way seeing you know where we're going. OK, mate. It's actually, follow the, follow the track. Oh, that's pretty safe. Yeah, OK. Are you right with all that? Because my, oh. hands are, my hands are full. Well, how come I going to carry all the stuff? Okay, well on this end, Paul, we've got what we call the fisherman safety loop. Yep. Which is what we 
tie around our body. And the whole idea of tying them off on here is that you never end up in the water, so therefore a rescue is never required, which is the big thing because in most cases, not all, but in most, the person that drowns is usually the person that's jumping in trying to save his friend or his or whatever. So how this works is if you like to just pop yourself in there and it's a slip knot. Yep, like over the so. top. Yep, like so. And around the guts. Put it up nice and tight and then just put the knot to the back so it's out the way. Now you go off to where you want to stand to have a fish. Right, you feel quite safe there? Yep. Right, then we bring it back through these anchors and tie off with a bow line. So once that's done there like that, you, uh, you're as safe as a church down there, mate. That is an incredible feeling of safety. You could not do that. And you know what, Rev? What a simple system. It is. And how long did it take to convince people this is a good idea? Oh, we've been about five years so far. So if you're going down the rocks, remember, safety is everything. Now, untie me, Rev. We need to go catch a fish. Well, Rev, just a short drive from our first location, you reckon there might be some fish here? Yeah, well, as you saw over there, wide up, all the uh, swells, way too dangerous to fish, but we're in a little place now called Canal Rocks, which is like a little bay in here, it's a bit more protected, so hopefully we can find a herring or two in here for you. Well, let's go and fish, mate. Let's go. I like the look of this place, it looks nice and calm. A bit different to where we were before, mate. Absolutely. and get a few herring in here we've actually I've put in some uh, tuna oil which will try and attract them in and once we get a few in we'll I actually use breadcrumbs here and, and a bit of oil mixed with it. Well everywhere I go I'm astounded by the different rigs you use to catch fish. Now Rev I've never seen nothing like this. What's with the tube and the hook at that end? Well this is uh, a wide gape hook as you can see. Yep. And we use a little bit of uh, tube, about an uh, inch and a half long. Yep. And it just acts as a lure. And we pull that through the water and um, the water goes through it, creates a little bubble line behind it. So that's our lure, our bait, everything in one? That's, that's it. Yeah, no bait. Okay. That's, then... that's the attractor. And then we've got this massive float, but it actually weighs quite a bit. What's the deal? Yeah, well, the whole idea of that is a bit of extra weight. Yep. As you're aware down here, it's quite windy and you need a bit of weight to get out and the hole in it is for putting our burley in. There you go, so we've got a float that weighs a lot with a hole in it, a piece of tube and a bent hook. This is gonna be very interesting. bubbling on the water. The cast beyond that? Yes, mate, and then trawl back through them. Go over the back of the slick there. Yep. I like when they hit it. Look at that, he's actually having a go. All the way in. All the way in. Yeah, we're on. You're on? Yep. Yeah, you come right over the top of them then. Well done, I'll try and get over the top of them. Okay, that is in the zone there. You should pick one up there, mate. You're gonna come right through them. There we are. Oh, they were splashing at it. Oh, I got him on. <laughs> you on? I can't believe for such a small fish how much fun this is. Oh, this one's got a bit of go. Oh, look at that. He's just come through. As Rev was explaining earlier, that circle hook that gets him every time just smashes him. And uh, as I was saying, for such a small fish, what a great deal of fun. And the best thing, anyone can physically do it. Quick, there are herring there, quick. Go out further, quick, quick. I just saw him jumping there. Come back fairly quick with your... So wind quickly? Yep. Like that? Oh, I'm on! Yeah, hello, <laughs> hey, see? 
how good is this man? Rev! Rev! Yes! Hey, we go, look at that! Australian and that, herring. And that is my target species, the Australian herring. That's it, mate. That's and you're, it. you're telling me? Well, that, that's quite a small one. Yep. But that is an ideal live bait for Sambo. Yep. Uh, not quite eating size, but hopefully uh, we'll pick up some for a ready to eat. Well, they, they are an absolute top eating fish. Rev tells me they're one of the best eating fish on the planet. And so far, everything Rev has said has been 100% true.